Good morning and welcome back to a place that some of you still remember and some of you probably have never seen if you have not looked into my older videos. This behind me, this wilderness behind me is the old garden. This patch of land behind me is such a special place to me, which is exactly why I thought this was the perfect place to film this intro. At the start of the Panini in 2020, we moved to a different rental space and this rental space has a bunch of land attached, including this area behind me and the landlord allowed us to farm and to garden here. This was completely overgrown, completely wild, far worse than it looks now even. It, it, it is getting closer to how it looked like in the beginning. And we completely transformed this patch of land here and this patch of land also completely transformed me. Before I moved to the Azores, I was a city girl and food in my brain came from the supermarket. <laughs> I had no idea how food was grown. I didn't even know how the plants looked like from the food that I was eating every single day. Like I didn't even know how a potato plant looked like. And I had zero interest in it. To be completely honest, I was not interested in knowing this learning about how these things work, let alone participating in it and actually doing it myself. And then we had this patch of land and my partner has been gardening his whole life and he was really missing it. And so he was like, let's try this. Let's just, let's just garden a little bit and see if, and you can help me and we see if you like it. And that was a life changing thing for me because I absolutely fell in love with it. I would have never guessed it in my wildest dreams but I now have such a deep passion for plants and gardening and growing your own food and sustainability and self-sufficiency and just nature as a whole. It is so amazing to me how you can take the tiniest seed and grow huge amounts of food or beautiful flowers out of it and it, it just blows my mind how such a small seed can go such a long way and ends up feeding you. And I feel so blessed to be able to experience this because I know not everybody can and not everybody can in the circumstances that I, that I do. Like a lot of people grow food because they have to survive. I grow food because I'm very, very passionate about it and because I do have the space. Um, and this was the space that changed everything for me. So this will forever and ever be such a special place for me behind me, even now that it is completely overgrown again and we haven't been taking care of it for months and months because we knew we were going to leave here eventually. Um, but this is still such a magical place for me. I love to, to come up here, even, even though it looks the way it does right now, but it just makes me so happy being here because it reminds me of the path that I've been on for the last two and something years and the love that I now have in me in regards to gardening and growing things. I now have such a deep connection with nature and plants. I now see them as my non-human kin and I learn so much from the plants themselves, from other farmers, homesteaders, gardeners on the internet, as well as the wonderful wisdom and knowledge from indigenous people from around the globe. I have expanded my horizon and my mind so much all thanks to starting in that little corner, corner over there to rip out some weeds and plant some plants. And it's, it's just wild to me. But why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because this is a huge thank you and a huge goodbye to this patch of land. We're not moving yet because the house is a renovation mess, <laughs> but we have, as you can see, <laughs> we have given up the garden a while ago up here and we have started to garden on our new land that is attached to our house that we bought. 
and we have a lot of very exciting plans for this land because this land is very different from this patch of land behind me because this year was the soil was very bad but it was completely overgrown with wilderness and now the new place that we're in has very very different soil is very rich in nutrients but it is also very depleted in other ways because it has been a cow patch for the longest time and we are going to transform that patch of land and I wanted to show you this um, and wanted to talk you through this which I will do in a second um, but yeah I just wanted to take an opportunity and start off this video in the patch of land that started it all for me that started this journey and say goodbye and introduce you to our new patch of land that I cannot wait to transform and that I cannot wait to see how it will transform me in return. Okay, now goodbye, goodbye old land, goodbye old garden, thank you for everything and let's go to our new land. Okay, so this is a bit weird because I know all my neighbors can see and hear me <laughs> and I'm speaking to a camera in the middle of a field, which is kind of weird, but <laughs> This is our land. Welcome to our land. It is, at the moment, a lot of grass and actually kind of high grass as well because we cannot cut it. We don't have a machine to cut it and we currently don't have animals to cut it. But the patch that I am standing in right now is the middle patch. We have a land that is separated into three slash four patches uh, and this is the middle one and I think it is actually it might be the biggest one maybe the down one is the biggest one um, on the down one we have already uh, started to plant a few things because the down one is going to be our main vegetable garden for all things tomatoes cabbage uh, corn beans pumpkins all of that is mostly grown down there but we also plan to sometimes use the upper patch so that the down patch can regenerate because that is a thing of permaculture. You need to give the land a break sometimes and that is what we're planning on doing. Like we want to use the down patch and this patch to grow our vegetables. Like most of the time it's probably going to be down but sometimes it's also going to be up. But this upper patch actually has a different function that we want it to be. And that is that here we are also going to have a bunch of endemic plants uh, long term. Currently we cannot afford <laughs> to, to buy them and to take care of this patch of land because we are so busy with the house and we are already not taking good care of the vegetable garden as you will see uh, in the footage that I'm going to insert somewhere. Um, so we cannot really take care of this patch of land right now, which is a bummer. But long term, this is what we want to be, like a very diverse area that we can use for vegetable growth, but also for endemic plants and a few trees here and there. We have a few pineapples over there, but mostly, let me turn the camera a little bit so you can see the corner. This corner and most of this patch actually is going to be for our future chickens and now some of you might ask oh, why don't you have like just completely free-ranging chickens that can go wherever they want and some others of you might ask why would you give so much space to chickens because this is a lot of space let me show you Is a lot of space. <laughs> we would have loved to have chickens that can just be completely free and go wherever they want but unfortunately our land doesn't allow that <laughs> because the chickens would disappear. <laughs> there is no like big wall that is separating us from the street or from the neighbors and yeah they would just disappear. <laughs> they would run away. Chickens are not only dinosaurs but also very much adventurous. They love to go on adventures <laughs> so we're gonna keep them in the adventure area over here and I just saw that the neighbor is staring at me. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. Oh god. Anyhow, 
<laughs> the main vision for this land is to make it into a permaculture garden while at the same time rewilding these lands because as I said, these are all cow patches and I don't know for how long, but probably for a while they have been cow patches for a while, which means grass, gene manipulated corn, cows, fertilizers and pesticides. That is what has been going on here and nothing else. And we want to change that. We want to bring back endemic plants. We want to bring back little corners where insects can flourish like a bunch of the old wood that you saw I'm gonna like probably turn into some kind of like insect hotel situation in one of the corners where I secretly hope a few bats might also want to move there because I'm obsessed with the endemic bats that we have here they're endangered uh, I'm gonna put the um, Latin science name of the species here if you want to google them um, Azurianische Abendsegler in German <laughs> It's a super tiny species of bats that doesn't have natural predators here. Um, so they also fly during the day, mostly around like sunset. And I love them so much. They are so near and dear to my heart. And they're endangered because more and more people don't build houses made out of the traditional rocks. And a lot of fields are turned into this. So they don't have a lot of habitat anymore. And of course, now we also have a lot of like dogs and cats and stuff on the island. So of course, now they have predators. Um, and you can hear the frogs in the background. <laughs> Anyway, I really love the bats and I would love to create like a corner where we can have some bats, like not us as pets, of course, they're wild animals, but just where they can live and where they can find a home. And I really hope I can provide that because it's really important for me that this patch, not only this patch, like all of our patches are feeding us, but also feeding animals and give habitat to as many animals as possible and not only our pets but also like insects bees we have a lot of bumblebees here the bats and uh, eventually we also want to have like a cat and maybe a dog and <laughs> maybe rabbits or whatever like we just want to have this as a wild space we want this to be wild uh, while at the same time be functional for us so we kind of want to rewild it but in a way that we can still very much use it I'm a bit hesitant to use the word food forest because while we live in a subtropical climate, <laughs> hello wind, <laughs> while we live in a subtropical climate, um, we still have a lot of like cold days and stuff and the endemic plants of the island, which should be the main focus in a food forest, are not actual big trees. They're like shrubs, <laughs> like uh, Urse, for example, I'm gonna insert the science name here as well is one of those endemic plants most of them are really just shrubs because of the strong winds that we have here all the time you can grow trees here but they're just not endemic here so i'm a bit hesitant to use the word <laughs> food forest also because not everything is going to be trees a lot of this is going to be shrubs and vegetables <laughs> and uh, like just everything that can grow here but there will be a patch that is going to be very much looking a little bit maybe like a forest one day and that is the upper patch and our idea is to plant as many trees as possible up there we have already started with a few that don't look very happy just yet that will <laughs> still take a while we just planted them a few weeks ago and um, we are going to fill this up with trees with fruit trees citrus trees nut trees every kind of tree <laughs> mostly trees of course that can also provide us with food or some kind of purpose some of them probably will also one day end up as wood for uh, keeping warm in the winter and all that kind of stuff and for making barbecues and fires but um, most of this is going to be fruit trees and it will give us shade and the best part is it is also going to stabilize the earth because as you can see behind me here and as you might have seen from the other footage the land goes downhill and it goes downhill quite a bit it doesn't look like it at first because you have the patches who are not straight but a little bit straighter <laughs> but the reality is the land goes down pretty steep and pretty high up in the other direction which means as soon as it rains and on Azores it can rain in the winter a lot and when it rains it rains it rains strongly 
the water really comes down and it runs all the way my neighbor is arriving and it runs all the way down to our house and we already have problems with that in the vegetable garden so and what the trees are going to do not only the trees up here but of course we're also going to plant like a few trees in the other patches is really to make the ground a bit more stable so we don't have to deal with uh, earth slides or so much water running downhill um, so at least that's the idea. On one of the sides of our land there is also a thing called a ribeira, so a river. But this river doesn't carry water all the time. It only carries water when there is a lot, a lot, a lot of rain. Um, which is cool, that's just a thing of Pico Island specifically that it exists here. But unfortunately the where our land meets the ribeira, there it goes down quite a bit so there is no um, fear of flooding or anything but it's not super stable uh, so we're also going to plant a bunch of plants alongside that ribera to yeah make sure the earth doesn't disappear there and our land just you know falls into into the river if there's too much rain so <laughs> this is our vision for the garden is to really rewild it bring back endemic species create a home for animals, insects and all kind of plants while at the same time be as self-sufficient as possible with as many fruit trees and nut trees and vegetables and all of these good things and a medicine garden as well. I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> I have the seeds but <laughs> I don't I don't have an idea how I'm gonna actually turn that into a reality. But um, yeah, we're gonna grow everything here from medicinal plants to fruit trees to everything and this is one of the fruit trees that we planted, our happiest one. Uh, it's a fig tree, a purple fig tree, and it has been growing like crazy since we bought it. So this one is definitely very happy here and I'm so happy for it. This is actually in the middle of the chicken patch, in the annual chicken patch, where the chickens are going to be all the time. Because of course, whenever we plant vegetables, on this patch the chickens can't really be there because they're gonna eat everything so we're gonna actually separate this patch into one part that is going to be for the chickens always and one part that we can like close them off if we want to use it for vegetables but this is actually in the part where the chickens are going to be always because i have this picture in my head sorry oh, i cannot sit on this floor properly <laughs> So I have this vision in my head because I know that chickens love to sit on trees and fig trees because of the strong winds here don't necessarily grow up. They grow like this. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but they grow kind of flat and massive to the sides. So they need a lot of space, but they're kind of perfect for the chickens like this because once this tree is all grown up, the chickens can just sit in it and eat all my figs and then I'm gonna be mad at the chickens <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's the plan it's also not going to be our only fig tree um, but for now it is and we're very happy that it's been growing so well anyway that is it I cannot sit here because it's really hurting my legs <laughs> um, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I cannot wait to take you along on this journey of transforming this land over the next couple of years <laughs> thank you for watching bye